Wow. <clears throat> God bless. God bless. Uh, God is good. It's been a long while. I hope you had a, a great Thanksgiving. Oh, not Thanksgiving. <laughs> Christmas. Um, and a uh, happy new year. Um, just thank God for today. Uh, just hope and by the time some, some of you will be watching this, uh, we've just had a blizzard. Um, and so I hope everybody is warm and safe. Um, so let's, let's pray. Um, Father God, we thank you for today. Lord God, we thank you for this time. Lord God, um, we pray, Lord God, that you know how we all, your children, understand. And Father God, I pray that you would speak to your people, speak to your children, Lord God, that you would change lives and change thinking. Um, we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. God bless. And uh, the last time we were, we were uh, chopping it up a little bit, we were talking about rest in Jesus. And I have my wife here. And um, we're going to continue on and talk about um, the rest in Jesus. But we're going to be coming from Hebrews 4, verses 1 through 11. And <clears throat> um, we're going to talk about, we're going to continue in talking about resting in Jesus um, when there's pressure, when there's life circumstances, um, uh, when things are going wrong, um, uh, it all goes back to our belief and our trust in God. Um, and so I want to start um, by saying that, uh, let me just get positioned here, that uh, believing and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ allows us to enter into his rest. Let me say that again. Believing and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ allows us to enter into his rest. Obedience to God allows us also um, to enter into his rest. Um, and again, the, the, the rest is not just talking about a physical rest, um, but every aspect of rest we all, we need. But he's talking about a spiritual um, rest. Um, and so uh, we're going to dig deep in, into that, but we're going to talk, uh, we're going to, Read from the scripture of Hebrews 4, verses 1 through 11. And so let's read that. I'm going to read from the King James Version. New King James Version, rather. And um, it's uh, here the word of God. Um, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did, excuse me, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he mm -hmm. has said. So I, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken in, certain, in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and, against, and again in this place they shall not enter rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter in, enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in, in David, Today, after such a long time as it, it, as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore 
be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone falls according to the same example of disobedience. And uh, here we, we hear a lot of comparison to the time which the, the children of Israelites, the children of God's, God's chosen people, the Israelites, were being freed from captivity, um, God using Moses. And so it kind of goes in and out from there, but he's talking about them and also talking about our um, um, trusting and believing in Jesus Christ, because the one they said for the another day or the one that's coming, they were at that time, they were talking about um, Jesus. And so let's have some things here. When we believe in the message and we look at verse three and said, well, when we believe in the message of the gospel, we enter into his rest. That's believing in Jesus Christ. And it seems like that's the foundation when life is going crazy and when um, you don't know what's going to happen next, um, uh, we believe in Jesus. And that belief and trust in him lets us know that he has our future, um, our circumstances um, in his hands, and he will work it out according to his will. And there is rest in that, knowing that we don't have to uh, 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 make it happen. Um, God does it for us as long as we obey him. Now there's safety and obedience. And it's not like God is going to, uh, uh, they're, they're, the work that we are ceased from doing is the working to try to get things to work out. The working, um, that tries to first and foremost, tries to keep our right standing with God. Um, that working to try to say that you know, if I pray enough or if I do this enough, then I will be in right standing with God. No, there's rest from that through believing in Jesus Christ because he is the fulfillment of that law. He is the fulfillment of all those things, all those requirements from the commandments and from the law. Jesus is the fulfillment of that. And when we believe in him, he fulfilled that um, for us. All right. And so we live in grace. And so now that when we mess up or do something wrong, we can ask God for forgiveness and keep going. Uh, that's rest. That's rest in him. OK. And so when the the he the, the writer of Hebrews was again, he's making this comparison of the children of Israel. They were coming to enter into the promised land. They were coming out of bondage out of work out of being out of attack out of the egyptians um um putting harsh work um on them and make and taskmaster and beating them and slavery and coming out of that work um to a place of rest which was the promised land um where god was their 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 head and god was their provider and god was their um leader um but they had problems believing um, in him. And so as we look at this scripture, we see that um, disobedience and unbelief leads to unrest. And when we look at disobedience, disobedience is, is connected is right around is the same area as unbelief. All right, because when we say we we believe in him and, and that he can He's going to hit in his word, specifically his word. When we say we believe in him and we believe that he'll his word or what he said he's going to do. And then we do something contrary. That's uh, unbelief. Um, and sorry to say, <laughs> but that's that's just what it what it is, what it boils um, down to. All right. What's, what's an example of 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 that, that that kind of un, unrest and even in our circumstances, um, um, and I'm not, let me, let me say this. When we hear bad news, when we have things that happen to us that is, that is tragic, um, our first emotion, um, a lot of times it's, it, 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 it's, it's going to be devastating. You're going to have an emotion about it. You're going to be upset about it. You're going to be angry. All right. Um, that's, that's fine. 
But what we're talking about is when it kind of leads into disbelief and kind of leads into blaming God, when it kind of leads into these other areas, um, then it starts to lead into unbelief. And, and, we, and when we start to try to take, take, take care of things in our own strength, with our own wisdom and in our own knowledge, um, we leave that rest. Um, when we start taking, when we start um, um, disobeying the word of God, when we start, when there's things in this word, a way of life that he has called us to live according to his, his word, the Bible, um, when we start leaving that, we leave unrest. And that's disobedience. And God has called us to say, we are, we live in, we that believe in Jesus, we that trust in him, enter into his rest. Amen. Amen. And so um, let's look at some examples. Now, I got just that was one example. Let's look at another example um, in Proverbs um, 16. A, I'm going to go through to one. Um, it says better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. Now, that's that's his word. Now, sometimes we, we say, well, what's the will of God? Well, what's, well, let's let's start with the word of God. OK, the Bible is the will of God. He has a way of living for us through his word. We start there and then God will direct us into the individual things that he has for us. But most important, the word of God is the will of God. Right. And so when we look at this and it says we're talking about this scripture is talking about unjust gain. Undoing things unjustly to gain money. To gain increase. All right. When we cheat on our taxes. Okay. When we have ungodly business practices. That steal from the disenfranchised. And the poor. What are we saying to God? I'm talking about the non-believer. And I'm talking about the Christian. I'm sad to say. Um, we kind of oh, gloss over. Um, some of these things. But when we have these. Ungodly practices. These unjust ways. That steals from people, from the poor, um, making cutting corners uh, and all these kind of things, bad business practices. What are we saying to God? What we're saying is we do not believe that you can provide for us. What we're saying is that I don't I don't trust in your your biblical way of finances, I don't trust in your biblical way of giving. I don't trust your the way you set up your economics. <laughs> That's what we say when we begin to do these things to try to get ahead at the at the expense of others, especially if you are a believer, especially if you're in the pulpit, especially you. Okay. If you're doing these things, you're saying, I got to take care of this because God is not going to do it for me. Okay, that right there is unrest. You are not in rest because why? You've got unbelief to enter in. No, right? When we begin to say this God thing doesn't work. And we go to other religions and other practices. You have now entered out of the rest of God. Now your salvation and your, your saving is now based upon your religious acts and works. You have now entered out of his rest. Salvation, another thing, salvation is his rest. And all of this is encompassed in that. Salvation is his rest. Believing in Jesus is his rest. He says, come, I, my burden, uh, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He said, and, and when you obey me, regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of what's happening around you, when I've given you a specific instruction, a specific where you hold on to that, there is rest in that. There is peace in in that. But we have to hold on to that. We we have to be believing. 
to believe in Jesus, believe, trust in him for all your circumstances, trust in the Lord, don't enter out of that rest, amen, so I just, I just I pray that you would, whatever God tells you to do, and, and this is a little bit awful, don't, don't be in disobedience, God has given instructions and whoever this this comes in contact with whoever watches it whatever instructions God has given you to do and it do that whatever God it it, 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 it and you see like oh he, he, it didn't work but he's not speaking anything else he said do to keep continue to do that be in rest today amen um what Okay, let me just backtrack um, here. Uh, when we decide to live our lives on our own terms and not God's, we do not enter into his rest. People's lives today are filled with anxiety, fear about the future, especially now. Um, we, we, we have a president um, that we don't know what he's going to do the next day or the next minute or the next hour. And so we, a lot of us are afraid about our future. Um, this is the time that we are living in. Um, people's lives are filled with hopelessness. And so sometimes people are just checking out, whether it be killing themselves or whether it be drugs or, or mentally checking out or emotionally checking out. Um, because uh, this is the time that we're entering in, we're entering in, that we have entered in. And so... Uh, God is saying when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we enter into his rest. We enter into it knowing that our, 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 our trust and belief is not in a system or a government. Our trust and belief is in a God that provides for his children. There's rest in that. And so when we look at um, verses four through eight, um, it talks about how David in the time of David, um, um, they didn't enter his rest. Um, um, in the time of Joshua, it was a time where, the, you know, Joshua was the, the one that was going to help to fight to enter into the promised land. Um, it says that he wasn't the one that was called. He even was the one, but they were what was called types of they were types of. Um, to show of what was to come. And they, there were types of, of say of Jesus. There was what was to come is was, they were talking about Jesus. It wasn't about Joshua though. That is and 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 the meaning of Joshua's name is, 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 is savior and Jesus in that name, but he was a type. He wasn't the promise, but he was a type. David was a type. He wasn't the promise, but he was a type. But the promise has come, and that promise is Jesus Christ. He, he came, um, um, born of a virgin, um, um, died on the cross, um, and rose again um, for our sins, that we, may be that we may have right standing with God. That's the rest that he was talking about. All right? That's the rest that they were talking about. And so even if you're, you're here now and you're watching this now or you, I mean, are you going to be watching this later? And the Holy Spirit is touching your heart um, and, and your eyes are being open and saying, you know, I want to enter into that rest. Um, um, and, 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 and you realize that, you know what, I, I, I'm a sinner, I, I, I have sinned. Um, and, and God and, and, and you want your life to change. The word of God says this in Romans nine, ver, Romans 10 verses nine and 10. It says that if we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Or in other words, what it talks about here, you enter into his rest. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made believe in the lord jesus believe that he is raised from the dead believe that he's god 
Jesus is God. Believe that um, he was born of a virgin. And believe that he has your future in his hands. And if you uh, want to make that confession, if you made that confession, um, you can easily um, contact us. You can comment on the bottom. You can contact us, Jesus Outside the Walls Ministry at G, uh, Jesus Outside the Walls Ministry at gmail at gmail dot com. You can inbox us on Jesus Outside the Walls Ministry um, and inbox. You can do that as well. Um, even if you're here now, or if you're hearing this later, you can enter into His rest. You can enter into his rest. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be in fear. You don't have to be, have hopelessness. Jesus is your hope. Jesus is your rest. Amen. And so I pray that um, you enter into that rest today. That rest is Jesus. Believing in Jesus. Believing in his teachings. Being a follower of Jesus, believing in him. That's the rest that he has for every believer, for everyone that believes. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. And we pray that those that hear this message, Lord God, will enter your rest, would trust in you, no matter what's going on around them, will put their faith in you. And know that you have everything under control. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Remember, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your rest. In Jesus' name, God bless you. See you next week, 7 o'clock. God bless.